So in 3.6, we are looking at polynomial inequalities. And, you know, to solve a polynomial inequality, and really, you know, before I get started, polynomial, uh, you know, everything pretty much we do is considered a polynomial. Um, you know, it's just more than, you know, many terms. Um, but for instance, um, we're going to be dealing with some square functions here. Uh, there could be some to the third power, stuff like that. So they just kind of group those all into polynomials. So to solve a polynomial inequality, it's got to be factored. Okay, so that's step one. So if it's not factor, factor it. All right, then we're going to find the solutions for the factors that are equal to zero, as we did uh, for quadratics. Okay. Then we're going to create intervals based on our solutions. And then we're going to look in each interval and determine if the value in that interval, when we substitute it in for x, makes a true statement or not, or gives a positive or negative value. And then we're going to find the interval that also satisfies the inequality. So let's look at an example here. So this right here. Okay, let me tilt stuff. I need to have things tilted. Um, is already factored. Now my solution, so step one is done. So step two, I'm going to solve x minus 2, x plus 3 equals 0. So x is 2 or x is negative 3. Then step three, I'm going to create intervals. So I'm going to create one at negative 3, one at positive 2. Keep in mind, this is to infinity. This is to negative infinity. Now, step 4. I've created three intervals. Now, see, at negative 3 and at 2, all right, are going to make this 0. And 0 is not bigger than 0. So we're not concerned with these. We want to find points that are smaller then the smallest that are in between the two solutions and then are graded. Greater, not graded. So in step four, I'm going to just try x is negative four. Okay, so this interval is from negative infinity to negative three. That's the interval I'm talking about. So I substitute negative 4 minus 2 times negative 4 plus 3. And what you're going to be asked to do in your MyLabs Plus homework, you're going to be asked to give if this is positive or negative. So this is negative 6 times negative 1, which is 6. So that is positive. Okay. Then I'm going to try, so in this interval, it's positive. Then I'm going to try a number in here. Well, the easiest number to try in here would be 0. So again, this is in the interval negative 3 to 2. So I'm going to try x equals 0. So I got 0 minus 2 times 0 plus 3. So that's negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6. So this is negative. So it's minus in here. Then I'm going to try a number in this interval. So then I'm going to try x equals 3. And that is in the interval from 2 to infinity. So 3 minus 2 times 3 plus 3 is 1 times 6, which is 6. So it's positive. So now, whoops, sorry about that. So I tried x equals 3 in the interval 2 to infinity. Put 3 in for x, I get positive. So my solutions, since this inequality is greater than 0, my solutions are the intervals where it's positive. So my solutions in step 5 are going to be negative infinity to negative 3 union with positive 2 to infinity. 
Now, the reason why I don't bracket the negative two, 3 and the 2 is because it's greater than 0. If it was greater than or equal to 0, then they would be bracketed. Okay, so that's kind of the process. Um, the only difference in example 2 and example 3 are I have to factor first. So I'm going to do step 1 here. I'm going to try to make right smaller because I'm running out of room. You never know how much room you need till you work a couple. All right, so this is going to be x plus 3, or excuse me, well, duh, that's a typo, that should be minus 4, excuse me there, x squared plus 3x minus 4, so that would be x plus 4, times x minus 1 less than equal to 0. So my solutions in step 2 for x plus 4 times x minus 1 equals 0 is x is negative 4 or x is 1. Step 3 I put these solutions on a number line, so negative 4, 1, and then I go create my three intervals less than negative 4, between negative 4 and 1, and greater than 1. So now I'm going to try numbers in each interval. So I'm going to try x is negative 5 and it's the, in the interval negative infinity to negative 4. So I substitute. I'm going to break this up here. x is negative 5, and I get negative 5 plus 4 times negative 5 minus 1, and that is negative 1 times negative 6, which is 6. And so that is positive. So it's plus here. And you're going to say, does this always happen this way? Hmm. I never say always, but oftentimes it could. All right, now I'm going to try a number in this interval here. So I'm just going to try 0. It's the easiest. 0 plus 4. 0 minus 1 is 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. And that's negative. So we're negative in this interval. So, uh huh, what do you think this one's going to be? Probably positive. Well, I'm going to try x equals 2. 2 plus 4 times 2 minus 1 is 6. And again, that is positive. So, I am looking for less than or equal to 0. And this is the interval where it's less than or equal to 0. So then my solution in step 5 would be, and I use brackets here, because it is less than or equal to. Okay. The last one, um, you know, I am going to look at one that is not factored that's greater than zero. So again, I do step one, I factor x plus five times x minus one bigger than zero. Step two, solve for equal to zero. So x is negative five or x is one. Step three, create my intervals. Hopefully this is, you know, looking a little bit better for you, you know, as, as we do these. Okay. So, you know, the process is very slimmer for each one of these. Um, when you start getting more than two solutions, that just gives you more intervals, um, you know. But when you have two solutions or two, you know, factors, I should say, you have three intervals. So I'm just going to go through again, try, and let's see if our uh, 
prediction keeps working. I'm going to do one less than negative 5. Just be careful. You know, the number line is symmetrical. So this is negative 6 on this side of negative 5. So I'm going to try x is negative 6. So negative 6 plus 5 times negative 6 minus 1. Hello, hello. That's negative times negative, which is a positive. Then I'm going to try 0. So let's separate this. 0 plus 5 times 0 minus 1 equals 5 times negative 1, which is negative 5. So that interval is negative. And lastly, try x equals 2. It does kind of get, you know, repetitive. Um, but you still have to understand how to do it, and especially if you're doing your homework in my labs, plus how to type it in. Because they're going to ask for the intervals. Oops, and I left the intervals off here. So this interval here was negative infinity to negative 5. The interval up here was negative 5 to 1. And then my interval down here, my last one where I'm going to try x equals 2, is 1 to infinity. So the intervals I'm checking never have brackets. But with your solution, depending upon your inequality, might be bracketed. So when I try x equals 2, I get 2 plus 5 times 2 minus 1 equals 7 times 1, which is 7, which is positive. Okay, so again, I want where it is greater than 0, so it is in these two intervals. So in step 5, my solution is negative infinity to negative 5 union with 1 to infinity. Now, had this been greater than or equal to, these would be brackets right here, okay? So that is it. You are now ready to solve a polynomial inequality.